Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick from Nick Expose. On this episode, we're gonna break down the images from the last POV video. I'm gonna link to it up top here if you haven't seen it already. Uh, I was using a Kiev 60, so it's a six by six medium format camera. Uh, so all of these images are square format. And uh, I'm gonna break them down, talk about what it is that I do like about them, what I don't like about them, why it is that I framed them up the way that I did, what drew my eye to them in the first place, to the scene that I shot. Uh, and then uh, right now, I want to kind of talk about uh, just this idea of square format and kind of my struggle with square format. So uh, I've had a couple different square cameras in the past, but I've always kind of struggled with this square format in street shooting. Uh, I, I love using it in portraiture and uh, I really enjoy it and actually that's what I actually got the Kiev 60 for is more on the, the portraiture side and being able to do uh, family portraits, being able to document my nieces and stuff like that and actually have the, the 6x6 format to, uh, to do that. But as far as street photography goes, I can never get my mind around street photography in 6x6 uh, square format. So. Uh, as I'm looking through these, I, I really realize like I could crop most of these down into like a two by three ratio and be much more satisfied with these images. Regardless, I just wanted to throw that out there at the beginning so that way you guys can kind of filter any of my frustrations through that first and foremost, and, uh, and then I'm gonna kind of break down the rest as we go. So let's jump over to Photoshop and uh, we're gonna get right into it. So over here we have uh, we have all our different images. I got them all over here and we're just gonna kind of break them down. I'm not gonna try and spend too much time on each of these, but I, I do wanna talk about what it is that uh, I enjoy about them, what it is that I uh, am kind of frustrated about them and why I kind of drew my eye to the uh, the scenes that I was looking at here and, uh, and why I shot them the way that I did. So the very first one that we have here is this photo. So uh, like you've seen in the video of the POV, the uh, contrast in this day was amazing. We had amazing, amazing light coming through and, uh, and I was really drawn to the scene right off the get-go. I mean, this is right into the photo walk to where this table here was casting this stark shadow down here and I just for for anybody that knows me I love ge geometry and having this triangle formed and then the re repetition of patterns so you have the circle here and you have these three different circles so uh, just breaking it down and I knew with uh, the contrast of the day with shooting this HP5 push that all of this background would just go completely black and, uh, and if you guys have seen my, my uh, editing video on how I edit my film skins, you guys know that I crush my blacks down anyways to give that nice stark contrast. And I'm really looking for like a separation of shapes. Uh, so much of my work is, is more graphic design than it is photography. And I'm really trying to break it down to the absolute essentials of different shapes. And you have these different squares that come through here, you circles and triangles. And I'm always working on uh, geometric patterns throughout, whether it be within tonal range or, uh, or just in subject matter, like we have a little bit of both here. Um, so I, I would say that for me, I would actually kind of enjoy this shot again if I was to go back to a two by three. If we took all this out and I was to just compose it like this, I would have this beautiful half circle here, half circle here in the triangle that would just fall dead center in the frame. And that's a, one of the things of, you know, trying to get used to having so much of this information in the square format. Uh, that sometimes I just would rather have shot it on a media or on a 35 millimeter. But anyways, that's kind of my thoughts on this one. We're going to jump forward. Like I said, I'm going to try and keep these a little short. Um, and then I, I do want to say, I don't know if all of these are in order, uh, for how the, they showed up in the video. They just kind of how they imported into Photoshop is kind of how, uh, I'm working off of them. So once again, here we're doing, uh, this stark, stark contrast. Um, to where these shadows really dive in deep into the blacks and uh, you know working off of threes shows up you know there's the rules of threes and uh, and I do kind of work that into my my repertoire quite a bit of compositional structures so looking in here you have the three different shapes here that were created by the the windows that are off to camera left that you can't really see but then also I'm always working on trying to direct the eye into a scene and uh, and kind of having this idea of moving out uh, into the the open pathway over here and you have these these two little guardrails back here that that really create these 
dynamic shapes that create this triangle in here that direct your eyes through the scene. So you're even if you're looking down here peripherally, um, you're getting directed through the scene by these lines that are up here. Uh, and then you also have, again, this square doorway here. I, I kind of wish that I could blow all of this out and kind of get these super, super stark and contrasty, but the uh, the contrast that was going on across the street, it kind of clutters up the, uh, the scene a little bit. And uh, it, I don't know, I, I kind of struggle over here. Uh, but at the same time, I do enjoy this shot. Uh, I do enjoy the uh, the light that was just being cast through those windows. I'm always looking as I'm walking through the city for um, just these gobos, right, of light, these go-betweens to where shapes of light are being cut out. And uh, if you guys know, obviously you guys uh, have probably seen multiple different videos in the past where I'm really searching out light and I'm really searching out the um, difference between light and shadow and how they play off of each other. So we're going to get rid of this shot, moving on to the next one. This is one that I was actually really excited about when I was uh, photographing it, but then as I developed it and looked at it later on, it didn't have the separation um, that I had hoped. Uh, I should have waited until she was actually up here uh, and, and stepped out into the light a little bit more. She would have had more rim light on this side, and maybe uh, a little bit of rim light on this side, um, but I think it would also have given her some separation, which is what I'm missing here. She just kind of blends into the background. When shooting black and white, one of the things that you need to pay attention to is your foreground to background relationship, uh, or your subject to background relationship. And if she's going to be the subject of the photo, she falls far too much into the shadows uh, over here, and uh, that just drives me nuts. So um, I really wish I would have waited a little bit longer for her to, even if she would have gotten out here a little bit more. I, I should have placed her actually in the middle of, of this area here, but I was hoping to get this uh, contrast where she was just coming out of the shadows and just emerging from the shadows. And it might have worked a little bit better if there wasn't so much residual light over here and if all this spilled over into um, the dark. But at the same time, it didn't. So uh, for me, this is very much a failed shot. Uh, and it's another one to where I do think that the, the Kiev 60... Uh, I don't think the, the prism finder is actually a full 100% view coverage of uh, the frame. So I was thinking that I was cropped in on most of these photos a little bit more than what it actually was. So I think if I remember correctly, I was kind of anticipating that my frame line was actually going to be, this is a terrible box, but actually, come on, stop it, actually going to be more like this. But uh, anyways... It's just one of those things to where this is the first time, this photo walk was actually the first time of shooting this camera. So uh, really getting to learn some of those quirks of it. So this next frame here is is one that, uh, again, I'm, I'm not too thrilled with off the get-go. Um, one of the things that I was trying to work with here is this branch that just dissects the, uh, the image here on an angle. Um, without this branch, it, it really gets kind of static. You have a lot of straight lines. Um, to where you have your, your giant straight line right through the dead center here. You also have this column over here, and then your branches go straight across left to right. And, uh, and without this, this branch, and again, I don't think that this is a super dynamic image by any means, but without this branch right here cutting down through and giving this angle of difference, giving this uh, slight bit of variance within the um, you know, geometric compositions, again, uh, it would have just been too much of a static image. Again, I was also uh, looking through an SLR, and I was looking through the scene at 2.8, aperture f2.8, but I was actually shooting at probably f11 here, and, uh, and I was really hoping that despite knowing that I had the extra depth of field because of being at f11, I was hoping I was going to be close enough to this branch to where it would still blow out a little bit more and become a little bit softer than what it is right now. So it's a little too defined for what I was hoping to go for. And uh, I was really hoping it was going to become this giant block of blur that was going to have the same qualities. It was going to still have this highlight that was running down through the scene. Um, but I was, I was really hoping that it would be kind of more of an interesting subject going through. And now it just kind of looks like something that creeped into the frame uh, instead. So... Uh, again, it's not an image that I'm super thrilled on, but at the same time, uh, I do still enjoy the geometry and the, the dynamics that are going on in here with the different shapes and the angles and everything like that. So 
This frame here, uh, one of the things is in my editing, I wasn't able to get my tones, and I didn't, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on editing it, but uh, I didn't get the tones to where I'd want them, and I probably would go in and start to burn this down a little bit more. I want this to have a little bit more separation than um, even some of the tones back here. I want it to kind of pop, or I might even uh, go in and uh, begin to just dodge that out, but get these different tonal ranges, because I think right now, as is, um, the the I think this was a red, if I remember correctly, on the video, but this red starts to blend in a little bit too much with this tonal range, and the values are all about the same uh, within here, even down here. And it just becomes this muted out, soft, uh, there's not these starks of contrast, there's not a bit of interest that really draws your eye to the multiple levels of the scene. So it just kind of all becomes super flat, even though there is this stark, stark contrast for the day. You have this gigantic shadow that creates this amazing L shape, or this J shape over here, this boot. Uh, this really does add a lot of interest, but then again, it starts to fall flat as soon as you get to this side of the image. And uh, it's really kind of unfortunate because I was really looking forward to this scene to, uh, to see what was going to come from it. But uh, again, the composition, I enjoyed the composition. I don't even mind. Um, typically something like this uh, would kind of bother me coming out of uh, the back of whatever the subject is. But at the same time, I think it, it just fits into the scene just enough to where it doesn't really add too many distracting elements. One of the things is I wanted to get down low to get these these lines nice and straight, and then in the video you've seen that I had to wait for the truck to go by, so uh, it was kind of one of these shots to where I'd spent a little bit extra time just to make sure that everything came out properly and uh, still didn't have a whole lot of interest at the end of the day. Now this shot here, this is one that I really, really, uh, I do enjoy, but again, I enjoy it right about here. If I were to get rid of all of this, if I were to get rid of all of this, if I would have shot this with my Leica, this would have been the shot that I would have shot. And I do really love the uh, the angle of pattern that goes through here with the highlights here. Then you have these shadows here that just break up the scene, and you all you just have these like uh, just repetition of pattern all the way through of highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow, but then you also have different densities of shadow, different densities of highlight, uh, and it really, really creates this interesting uh, dynamic, in my opinion, uh, compositional shape and tonality that happens all the way through the image. As it sits, uh, as the medium format shot, this up here really starts to bother me. This is really competing with all of the beauty down here. So you have this giant, your eye is really gravitated towards um, contrast and your eye is going to uh, gravitate naturally towards the thing that's most contrast in the image. And the most contrast is this giant white block at the top of the image. And so even though my eye wants to look down, uh, down here, and this is where I really wanted to direct the eye, it constantly shoots back up and constantly goes back up to uh, this area up here. And I tried di or burning it down a little bit in, uh, in Lightroom, but it just wasn't coming up properly. It started getting a little too muddy. So um, shooting the, the square format, I probably should have gotten down lower and started pointing my, my camera down lower. Uh, but at the same time, I was I was trying to work with this shape, hoping that it wasn't going to go too crazy. But again, it's it's really just training your eye, uh, and it's something that I've gotten much much better on from when I first started shooting all black and white. But it's something that I'm still constantly trying to train my eyes, seeing seeing tonal values and seeing uh, how it is that you can manipulate tonal values in shooting, and then knowing where you can bring them in post or anything like that or in the print. Um, and I, I really kind of biffed it on this one. So this is one of the, the few shots that I actually do enjoy from the, the square format. So uh, what really drew me here was uh, these letters being cast onto this uh, couch here through the window. And uh, the light was just perfect to where it just... These are stark, stark... I mean, there's no drop-off of the shadows of these uh, letters. And I just absolutely love it. I, I do love how the square format really captured this. I probably will go back. Uh, this is one of the images that I might go back and actually spend a little bit more time on and uh, go in here and start to dodge out a little bit of this because I want these shadows. I want to dodge the, the couch out a little bit and then I want these shadows to really pop uh, so that way there's no doubt of what the, the subject of the scene was. Um, I, I try to work letters and 
you know, typography into my photography quite a bit. So if you look at a lot of my street photography, I'm either shooting through letters or I'm including letters. And again, it brings it back to my background and uh, in graphic design and really kind of bringing these graphic elements and typography back into, uh, you know, in, a, in an interesting way. I don't want to just include a sign, just include a sign, unless it's a very important uh, point of the image. But I, I do want to include just bits and pieces to where it becomes this abstract graphic design element. Uh, and I really enjoy that. One of the things that, that I kind of wish is, I wish the window was a little bit more clean because I, I would like to have seen the uh, the tonal range up here not be diluted with all these different dust spots and, and just dirt and grime that was on the window. But at the same time, uh, I'm not gonna go and clean the window in order to get the shot. So uh, it's just one of those things that you just kind of work with. So this frame here, I was walking up uh, down past uh, a little skate shop that's over in, in town here and right over next to it is an alleyway and looking back through, uh, I wanted to work off of, again, this is one that would probably work a lot better if it was a vertical 35 millimeter frame and it would also work better if I would have gotten my exposure uh, properly. But you have this grid that I was shooting through and it's this grid that really adds this beautiful interest uh, as you're looking through, but then once you look into the scene, you start to see this giant uh, or highlight here that cuts out the shadows. You have this area here that's uh, a similar tonal range to, to over here, and you start to get again these shadows uh, that define these highlight shapes um, that are just beautiful. And at the same time, if I would have gotten my exposure right, I should have probably blown out these highlights a little bit more and exposed for the shadows because I had this, this chair in here, these uh, different elements of interest down there and then really bringing out the the uh, tonal range within this alleyway and kind of bringing this up in tonal value uh, would have really made for an interesting interesting scene I think I might actually go and revisit uh, that scene with the Leica and get it on a different day to where similar kind of light but actually exposing for the shadows instead of for the highlights because I think as it is right now it just gets a little too cluttered and it's just almost like what am I looking at I don't think it's too visually interesting. There's another scene to where I was working really off of the, the shadows and the different uh, elements of shape that were going on in here. Again, I thought, uh, I remember kind of composing to where the frame was a little bit more like this. Oops, uh, I can't draw a straight line. Um, but a little bit more in here. I, don't, I didn't expect that it was going to capture so much of this scene. Um, but at the same time, I was really working off of this shape here and then also the the shadows that are formed here and then this re repetition of pattern that goes all the way throughout not only in the bars themselves but also in the shapes of the shadows uh, the shadows back here and then these nice little angles of shadows up here and actually I almost went up and did a, a detail of just this uh, area right here and I kind of wish I would have I would have probably have enjoyed um, that much more than I enjoy this image here. This was a little bit too much information. I, I do feel like it gets a little too cluttered uh, with all the different things going on. Um, this might be a, an image that could work well within a series, um, but as a standalone image itself, I think it just has too much information. It's just trying to tell too much of the story. In a series, it could reveal parts of the story that the details uh, might not have, but as a standalone image, I just think it's too loud and boisterous. Going into the latter shot, this again isn't one of the, the most thrilling images, um, but this is really just a, a study of composition. Uh, again, working off of these angles that are cutting and dissecting the image and just giving this uh, dynamic quality to the image that, that really kind of if I take this away, one is you, you really end up at this point here. This is the, the point of uh, just the focal point of the image. But then you also have these, it's almost like a game of shoots and ladders to where you have these different angles that kind of draw your eye down here and you start to search the pattern of the, the uh, brick and the texture of the brick. And then you end up over here and you start wondering like, the story between the the ladder and the the uh, you know the security camera and I, at least this is where my mind goes i start building these stories within and it starts to feel a little bit more uh i don't know the scene kind of seems like conspiracy theory to me for whatever reason as i look at it i kind of think like what's on top of this roof why do they have a security camera over here if the if the ladder's there all the time then maybe the security camera is to make sure that no one climbs the ladder 
So then they don't want people climbing the ladder. What do they not want people to see? And it's just these funny little things that my mind does as we go through. But uh, obviously that's not the case. They're probably working on something on the roof or something like that. But at the same time, uh, with photography for me, it's really about building a story that could be not necessarily documenting the story that is. Um, I kind of find myself to be much more of an abstract and surrealist photographer than I do like a photojournalist. Uh, I'm not always, sometimes, in some cases, I'm trying to document the scene and tell the story of what's actually happening. Um, but a lot of the times I'm building a story that's uh, separate of the individual scene that I'm shooting. I'm, I'm taking elements from that scene to add to another scene and really build a different story. So, uh, I don't know. This one, again, is is one of the images where it's not necessarily anything thrilling or, you know, amazing. But at the same time, this is one of my favorites from from the the series. This one and the uh, the letters being shined on the couch were um, probably my favorites from the day. Uh, this is just my buddy uh, Josh. We did lunch. This is actually the building that the back side of of it had that ladder. So on the front side of the building is this Thai restaurant. We had Thai food, um, and I completely missed focus. Um, but at the same time, it, it still captures my buddy, and I do enjoy that shot. This one here, so uh, with the last shot, that was on Tri-X as well. Uh, so during lunch, I switched over and, and put a roll of Tri-X in, started shooting that at uh, 1600, and then went across the street and kind of the rest of, most of the rest of the, the roll was shot on this church that I'm shooting. Um, but I had some issues with the roll. So uh, one of the, the quirks of the Kiev is if you don't advance all the way on the first time, then it kind of hangs the camera up and you have to advance all the way again and it ruins the the shot that you would have gotten. Um, it kind of it extends the advancement over and you start missing out on frames that you could have shot. So on this roll, I really only got these next, what is it, six images. Um, and then there was also some light leaks. And I don't know if the light leaks were from the camera or if it was from the, the roll of film or what happened here. Um, maybe when I took the roll out, it might have been outdoors and maybe, I don't know. Uh, but I did have some, some light leaks. So over here on this image, um, you could see to where the, the light leak started creeping in. Um, and it was actually a little bit worse. I was able to pull it down and post a little bit. Uh, this is another one to where I was really hoping that the shadow here, and I could burn it down, but again, it just kind of looks weird. I was hoping that it would naturally go a little bit darker. Um, the issue is, is there's a, a giant wall over on this side, and uh, on this side is really just bouncing all of this light back over, and then as you can see, filling in this pillar here. And I'd seen that, but I was really hoping that if I underexposed a little bit, that I would really crush those shadows, and it just didn't turn out as well as I would hope. So. Uh, at the same time, I was working off of these diagonals here. Um, I just love the the structure of the door. The, again, putting a, a triangle direct center into the the frame and just giving this solid, solid, um, you know, uh, anchor to the image to where it just has this beautiful geometric shape right off the get go, and then you start to add in these other elements. Uh, I kind of find what my what my center focal point is gonna be, and then I move forward or backwards to add or subtract elements from the scene. Um, sometimes, that's what I also like about the, the Leica, and being able to see, when you're looking through the rangefinder, being able to see just outside of the frame lines, so then I know what it is that I'm excluding, or what it is that I could include in the frame if I just move forward or backwards a little bit. Um, so, I, I find my, my triangle, my circle, whatever my, uh, whether it be a geometric shape, whether it be just a uh, light or shadow or just a, a subject, I find that first and then I build the story around it. Um, so really here it was it was this amazing uh, arch of the, the doorway, the, the beautiful like texture of the doorway, but then this triangle right here and then I started moving in and out to add and subtract and build the story around it. So going on to the next one, uh, this is a super abstract image. What didn't show up in here, what you could kind of see, and if you look back at the, the video, the reason why I was looking in here and the reason why I took the shot was actually right here is an American flag, and you could actually kind of see the, the stripes of the flag right here. Um, and I was hoping that it would show up a little bit more. Uh, it showed up as I was looking through the viewfinder, but then it didn't translate as well as I would have hoped uh, in the thing. Now, if I were to shoot this again, 
Unfortunately, this is on a part of town that doesn't have a lot of foot traffic. I would have loved to have found, uh, you know, a person walking through the, the scene. I could have gotten some cars in the scene, um, but at the same time, it just doesn't have a, a humanistic and a personal aspect. I would have loved to have found a, a person walking through the scene and maybe um, catching this church on a, a church day and actually going and, and capturing it on a, a Sunday morning might be the best part, time to uh, capture a scene like this to where I could start working human elements into the the crazy depth of reflections and everything like that. I do like the different tonal ranges and uh, just the interest that happens in here. It, it's kind of a failed image, but then at the same time, it does have a certain amount of interest in it that really kind of draws me in and I try to figure out what what actually is this? What could this be? What was this when I uh, when the person first shot it, right? And that's what I hope that it would do for people. At the same time, this isn't an image that I would probably share uh, unless, again, it went with another series that uh, made sense with this kind of thing. Moving over into here, the big thing that drew me to this scene uh, was actually this shadow right here and this weird cutout that it has. This uh, It just has a lot of dynamic nature to it. Um, and then just the ornateness of this uh, this guardrail or this railing as it goes up the stairs. And you have, uh, if we get rid of this again, if you look at the, the way that this breaks down, you start to get these areas of interest where you have these different tonal ranges. And it starts to grid the image off into these, these different shapes. And it's just a really, I don't know, unique instance for me. This is one of the ones that I do think that shooting on a uh, square format actually worked well for. I was able to, to really play with um, just a lot more information than I would normally have with shooting. I, I might be able to do something like this on a vertical, so if I were to go and extend it up, and actually as I'm looking at it right now, I would like to see a little bit more of the uh, the top of this guardrail banister uh, and be able to see a little bit more of the detail. So maybe shooting this vertically, but at the same time, I do think that this is one of the ones that works halfway decent for a, uh, a square image. And then I also really enjoy, this is a, a reflection of the, the building behind me, but this interesting like uh, shadow up here again, and it's just really these shadows that, that have these really interesting uh, shapes and dynamics to them and this little notch right here and the arch right here and it's just these little nuances to where maybe maybe I'm the only one who looks at this kind of stuff and really enjoys it but at the same time uh, it's different than any other scene. I mean you could walk around anywhere and see you know really stark straight shadows but then when you start to see these types of shadows that could only be cast through the the cutouts of this banister through the light through this window on this chair you know it starts to become a characteristic in and of itself uh, and I just really enjoy that. Again, we're working off of reflections here. This one I did add different cars in. Um, this is the same scene. So just to the left here uh, is, if I go here, so just this way is the uh, the chair and the banister that we were just photographing. So then I just moved my camera over a little bit and, uh, and really was focusing on, one, the clouds in the sky, but then two, um, this beautiful... Uh, it's not really a stained glass window, but this frosted glass window with these different shapes cutting it out. And it's this banister coming through and this shape here. And again, the, the little cutout here. And it's just all these different repetition of patterns here, which matches the repetition of patterns in here. And I just absolutely love this. There's so many different patterns. This is one that I, I, I don't know, this is probably one that I would show. This is, might be one that I would put up on Instagram or something and just kind of share uh, some of the creative uh, experimentation that I'm doing and just trying to see what it looks like to to start adding different elements. Uh, point of views in the past, I've shot through different windows and stuff like that. And the thing that I really enjoy about looking in a window and seeing the reflection behind you is it adds uh, almost like a fourth dimension or, you know, it. there's the, the things that you're looking at in front of you, but then there's also the things that you're looking at behind you. And there's two different uh, three-dimensional, you know, objects that are going on in that instance and in, in whatever it might be but I really really enjoy uh, kind of experimenting through different things like this so um, this is one that that I actually am really pleased with on to the second to the last image um, one of the big things that that just drew me was this this giant angle and then the the beautiful like turret tower here on this church that I was walking by this is over by our library here in town 
and uh, just adding different levels. I actually did a little bit of, of dodging and burning in here to where uh, I, I wanted there to be, there was this kind of natural gradation, um, you know, naturally, but I wanted to emphasize a little bit. So I burnt this down a little bit, burnt this down a little less, and then burnt this uh, just to kind of give this this depth of walking through. Uh, one of the big things that, that kind of drives me nuts about this image, and I would actually really, really like this image if it wasn't for this, is this area right here. It's this little um, triangle of just black, black shadow. Um, and there's no really saving that. It's, it's really kind of lost for detail. Uh, but this shadow here really kind of drives me nuts because it's this one little tangent on the, the top corner that um, even though the, the image is well balanced, it just constantly, I don't know, for me at least, I, I try and avoid adding anything too close to the edge of any of the images. So with composition, uh, you have different weighted values and, and something could grab a weighted value by either being extra dark or extra light compared to the rest of the scene small or large compared to the rest of the scene or a combination of a few of those things and and but then also the placement within the scenes something that's already well balanced and then you add something that's one darker than the rest of the scene and then two smaller than a lot of other things and then three right on the edge of the image it just adds this bit of awkward weight to the to the edge of it and it just starts to tip the image over to the side and, and that's just one thing that really really drives me nuts on this uh, I guess I, I could probably crop it down a little bit but uh, I think I actually even tried that uh, let me get my brush here I could probably go in here and do a, a square or something like that but I do like the size of this wall. I think the size of this wall is necessary to balance out uh, this object over here. So I don't know, it's just one of those ones to where if I were to shoot it differently, uh, I would probably move over and, and take that little triangle of, of dark shadow out of the scene completely. So this one here, this is actually at the base of the steps of our library, which is across the street from that last church that I shot. And uh, I just, I think little details like this are super interesting. This is actually, uh, I think this one is stretched a little bit to fit in with the rest of the images, but um, this one is lacking detail, but on a full resolution scan, this would actually be quite sharp. Um, but these, these little details, I, I like the balance of having both uh, these guys over here and then this one dead center. Uh, the whole scene, if I get rid of these, the whole scene, I really enjoy the, the difference in contrast. You have almost a, a direct line going down through here to where this is all highlight, this is all shadow, but then the interesting thing too is this is all shadow and then this is all highlight. So you have this nice shadow, highlight, shadow, highlight um, going on. You also have this nice little cutout of the shadow down here. You have the beautiful um, lines of the, the street lamp uh, base here. And, uh, and I just really think that there's a lot of visual interest that goes on in a scene um, like this. So uh, this is another image that I was, I was actually kind of pleased with walking away for, uh, for the day. Anyways, this went a little bit longer than I anticipated, but I also shared some other things in there that I, I wasn't anticipating on sharing. So I hope you guys found this uh, valuable. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. Do you, uh, do you think that there is anything that I missed in breaking down the images? Obviously, I couldn't go in depth. Uh, we could probably spend... Uh, maybe not on these images, but on average images, I could probably spend like, you know, 15 to 20 minutes talking about some of them. So I, di I didn't want to go too, too in depth. I wanted to keep this kind of still concise, but at the same time, uh, you know, not ramble on too much. So hopefully I didn't do that. Hopefully you guys found this uh, nice and useful. If you learned anything from it, I'd love to hear that in the comments down below. But uh, I, I look forward to, as the, uh, the weather is kind of clearing up, we're starting to get more sunny days. I look forward to getting out and... Uh, and actually not freezing my tail off, but doing more of these POV videos in the nice spring and summer. And then uh, we can do more breakdowns of, of different images. So if there's anything in particular that you would like me to break down in the future, or uh, I also want to throw this out there, if, if you guys would find it valuable for me to go back through some of my old uh, photos and kind of break down some of those and talk about the compositional ideas and, uh, you know, breaking down how I directed the eye through anything like that. I'd love to hear that as well. Maybe we could have the uh, the community 
vote on some of the images that you'd like to see me kind of dissect a little bit further. But um, let me know in the comments down below if this is a new video. If you're new to the channel, I'd love for you to check out some of the videos and uh, enjoying this amazing community. This is an incredible, incredible community of amazing photographers, and we'd love to have you a part of it as well. So go ahead and like and subscribe down below. I look forward to hearing you guys' comments, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Until then, go and push yourself two stops. Peace.